19 hours GMT. Hello and welcome to News 360 from the News Tab here in Accra. I am Issa Moni. And I'm Natalie Ford to look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. Heaven Black Mosquito Coil and Spray. Premier Health Insurance. Calipo and Nido Fortigro. Your love, their future. Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi closed down indefinitely after rampaging student protesters vandalized property. One person confirmed dead and six others injured following the collapse of portions of the Legon Mall under construction. Adabraka Salted Fish Association sees plastic containers of suspected unwholesome tilapia. Drivers express disappointment over latest fuel price increase. And on the international front this evening, Cameroon's President Paul Bia wins seventh term in office in polls marred by low turnout and voter intimidation. got the details of these stories and much more news here on News 360. You could watch us all across the world on 3news.com and DSTV channel 279. Top on the news this evening. The Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi, has been closed down indefinitely following a violent protest by students. The decision was taken after a meeting between school authorities and the Ashanti Regional Security Council. A dusk to dawn curfew has been imposed on the school. The students are expected to vacate the university premises latest by 12 noon tomorrow, Tuesday, October 23. Only foreign students would be allowed on campus with heavy security presence. Meanwhile, a delegation from from the Education Ministry, led by the Sector Minister, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, will be meeting university authorities on Tuesday, October 23. And still on the chaos at the KNUSD campus, the police and the military had to be deployed to restore law and order on the campus of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and technology in Kumasi after rampaging students damaged at least 20 vehicles and other university property. A piece matched by students in protest against alleged brutalities meted out to them by campus security turned chaotic. Ibrahim Abubakar has the rest of the story. The demonstration follows last week's clash between some students and campus security, which led to the hospitalization of one student. The angry students claimed the campus security mandated to protect them are the same people brutalizing them for no offense. Well, we can't stand for even a security man that we pay school fees for them to be paid. To beat our students, no, we can't do that. We can't stand and watch our, our leaders. It's true, we can't stand. We are very angry. We, we are calling for justice. Justice. Those victims who are involved, involved in that enough action, enough. they should be sacked. And then we, we are asking who supervises the actions of the security. Uh, is it the Ghana Police Service or they are on their own? We want to know. The Students' Representative Council declared a boycott of lectures to register their displeasure over the alleged brutalities. Students were expected to march peacefully to the administration block to present a petition to management of the university. But the peaceful march turned chaotic. The students blocked all roads leading to the lecture halls to prevent both students and lecturers from accessing the classrooms. Over 20 vehicles parked at the administration block were vandalized. Deputy Registrar of KNUST Kwame Yabua expressed disappointment over the turn of events. He said the management of the university will meet to ascertain the level of destruction and plan what to do next. A lot of destruction has gone on. Uh, property has been destroyed. Uh, 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 works that has been done with huge sums of money, government money, uh, have been destroyed. So I wouldn't say I'm happy. But uh, that is not to condemn the police for anything. Well, they, they couldn't help us. They would be in a better position to 
uh, say why they couldn't help. A team of police and military personnel had to fire warning shots to disperse the mob. You're watching News 360, and uh, I've been joined in the studio by Te Mensa Abbey. Te Mensa Abbey is the spokesperson for Katanga Alumni. I mean, when you talk about Katanga, you're talking about KNUST. Te Mensa, welcome to News 360. Thank you. Te, we have seen videos of what has taken place on the campus of the KNUST in Kumasi. Do you like what you are seeing? No, we as alumni, we, we are totally appalled by what happened today. Mm. Mm. But we have, uh, we have the history behind all this. Mm -hmm. uh, last Friday, there was some brutality meted out by the security men on campus. Mm -hmm. And uh, this wasn't just a one-off thing. Mm -hmm. It's been building up since uh, all this uh, mixed hall situation came into being. So, so is this a response or a retaliation? No, um, the mixed hall wasn't, Katangis were not happy, Unity members weren't happy. Mm. The university initially said that it was uh, to promote more ladies in STEM education. Mm. But then when we pointed out that you have to give the choice for a, an individual to either be in a mixed hall mm. or a single sex hall, you can do that and still admit 50% ladies in the, in the traditional halls mm. without changing the single sex halls to mixed residences. Mm. So when we said that, the university decided that, oh, then we are going to make every hall a mixed hall. And mm. that, sh that should, that should uh, somehow rest the case. Mm. But then we still had the point that a person should have a choice to either to be in a mixed hall or in a single sex hall. So we as alumni petitioned the president, we petitioned the Ministry of Education or two for uh, alumni in D.C. recently went to the town hall where uh, the president yeah. made his uh, presentation and they, they petitioned him right there and asked that uh, this, this thing should be looked at. Because for us, it's our tradition. We, we, this uh, Katanga has been around for 55 years. Mm. It's all male and uh, we don't think that... Uh, but what is wrong? I mean, Katanga, if you are all male, so what? I mean, when you graduate, you come and live with women. So, I mean, what is wrong if women are brought into that hall. Anyway, the, the way you are sounding is so peaceful that, well, I mean, well. minds were at, I mean, <laughs> were, were at level discussing issues. I mean, should this have led to some vandalism on the campus? No, that's why I initially... So what do you think went wrong? Well, uh, the students have been... Um, all this mixed whole thing is all about silencing the student's voice. Mm. So it's been since my years. I, was, I finished bachelor's in 2001. Mm. The university tries to silence student activism, mm. but this time around, mm. it's with a certain force. It's with a certain, you know, if I don't do it, then I haven't done my work as uh, the vice chancellor, mm. which for me is tyrannical. For us, okay. we think uh, he has brought this upon himself. Mm. This shouldn't happen. In fact, uh, when we were in, in, in KNUST, we mm. had all years being represented in the hall. So mm. first year to final year to post mm. Now it's only first years in the hall. Who is there to supervise you? Who is the, your senior to even give you lecture notes, give you past questions and stuff? So we, yeah. as the alumni, we have been calling for that mm. thing to be uh, rescinded. That's mm. in out, out, out policy. And we also been calling for our uh, Katanga and Unity. I think you have a lot more to tell, but due to yes. time considerations, yeah. <laughs> we may not be able to uh, yeah, continue so, this so, discussion. So, but but so I, I hear you have plans already to go there tomorrow. Now with curfew and school being closed, are you still going to go ahead and go there? Oh, I, I, I can't speak on that at the moment. Okay. Because uh, it's a... It's a, but a why would you, what would be your mission if you should go tomorrow? Well, we still want to support our boys. Uh, uh, we are hearing that some of support them, them have to been bring peace up. or to no. We will have to find legal ways to sort out. Uh, some of them were arrested last mm. Friday, okay. and today we don't know what happened. We'd like if we go, we are going to have a, a, a look at things for ourselves. All right, we'll be looking out for you whenever you go. If you are able to go, and we'll be calling on you to talk to you again. Okay, Ten I minutes, that. Spokesperson for Katanga Alumni, we're grateful for you joining us on News 360. It's my, it's my pleasure. Right. Let's do some more stories on News 360 tonight. And one person is confirmed dead, six others injured, when portions of the Legon Mall under construction collapsed mid-Monday morning.
Peter Kwaada taught reports, the deceased, whose name was given only as Said, reportedly fell from the sixth floor of the building. The accident reportedly occurred at about 10.30 Monday morning. According to the Lagon District Police Crime Officer, Superintendent Kinsley Abwaji, he received a distress call on the collapse of the building, which prompted the deployment of investigators to the scene. Police preliminary assessment revealed that the workers were attempting to scale up the height of the shopping mall extension by linking existing columns with beams. The police said a concrete mixer was brought in to provide concrete to the sixth floor where the work was being done. In the process, the columns which were erected right at the tip of the concrete floor gave way leading to the accident. The deceased, known only as Said, reportedly fell from the top and was confirmed dead at the Lagon Hospital. Six other workers were also injured and rushed to the Lagon Hospital for treatment. One of the injured reported to be in critical condition was referred to the 37 military hospital. Another was referred to a private laboratory for a CT scan on a head injury. The rest were responding to treatment at the Legon Hospital. Information we gathered from the police indicated that no official complaint had been lodged by the construction firm as at 3.30 p.m. Monday. The police have since cordoned off the accident scene and directed all those operating in the building to close their shops temporarily. The Adabraka Salted Fish Association has seized 40 plastic containers of tilapia at the market. Now, the association contends it will not allow the sale of fish, which they claim is unwholesome. The fish is reported to have been transported to the Adabraka market Monday dawn from Germany in the South Dai district of the Volta region. The leadership of the Tilapia Sellers Association of the market said they had a tip-off that the fish was unwholesome and would not allow its sale to the unsuspecting public. Owner of the Tilapia Gladys Agbovi said she bought the fish from the Tropo Farms in the Volta region and not from Mr. Chari. We don't believe the fish has been poisoned. We rather suspect they died as a result of increase in water levels caused by torrential rains. She said it is her first time bringing tilapia to the Adabraka market. I have come to sell the tilapia, but because the market authorities asked me to send them away, I have no choice. She showed the news team her trading certificate to justify her activity. Agnes Agbo who has been selling tilapia for over two decades, explains what buyers must look out for when buying tilapia. There are differences in the tilapia sold at the market. What I am showing is the healthy type. The unwholesome tilapia is usually black and soft. And then a trader held the same position. I'm a jailer. We process the tilapia when fresh from the water. We do not wait till they die, else they will decay. The Visionaries Commission has started probing the cause of death of tilapia stock at Tesuchari in the eastern region. The commission on Friday said intense investigations were underway. Again, the Food and Drugs Authority is also assessing the situation, especially with regard to whether the tilapia has been sent to the market for public consumption. In Ghana, salted dried tilapia, popularly referred to as Kobe, is a delicacy. Now let's move into a story of a young man who was born into a family of extreme stammerers. As Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark International Stammerers Awareness Day, extreme stammerer Abdul Karim Hamidu wants employers to stop rejecting persons with the condition. Here is Sarah Parkun's report. 35-year-old Abdul Karim Hamidu holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in social work and sociology with first-class honors. He also holds a Master's in philosophy in social work all from the University of Ghana, Legon. Currently, Karim is working as a researcher in data analysis, monitoring and evaluation with the civil service. 
He says life has not been easy for him as an extreme stammer, adding he consciously avoids engaging platforms though he would have wished to participate in such. Karim lamented how some employers unfairly treated him by assessing his intelligence by only interviews. So, so when they ask you a question, I'm stammering. People will think that you are not good. So it's not that it's a society. The society should not use the ability to talk as an what is it, of intelligence, an index of intelligence. He's married with three children, of which the eldest is also a stammer. And he plans to assist him overcome the disability. Happy for him because I will actually help him to overcome it. Because he is actually like he has a dad who stammers. He, I, now I, I understand it. I understand the stammering. Stammering has long been recognized to run in families. But scientists now say they have identified three genes which may cause the problem. They believe that changes which have already been tied to metabolic disorders may also affect the way in which parts of the brain function. About 1% of the world's adult population are affected. The Ghana Stammering Association says government must lead the way to reduce discrimination against sufferers. President of the association, Elias Preko, advised the public to maintain eye contact when relating to persons who stammer. You have to demonstrate good listening skills when speaking to a person who, 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 who stammers. Don't shy away or, or don't you know, look away when you've seen that a person is stammering. That's, that uh, makes the person embarrassed. It's as if you are not comfortable with, with, with how they are you know, talking. The theme for this year's stammering awareness is speak your mind. Turn to some other stories this evening as Sierra Leone has requested for technical assistance from Ghana to implement her new policy on free primary and secondary education. A communique issued after a bilateral meeting between President Ikufuado and Julius Madabio also affirmed a request for Ghana's assistance in the energy sector. This is the first official visit to Ghana by the former Sierra Leone opposition leader who assumed office after elections some seven months ago. The two-day working visit is to afford President Julius Mada Bio the opportunity to introduce himself to government and people of Ghana and to strengthen relations between the two countries. The two leaders held bilateral talks to deepen cooperation and improve economic relations. The two leaders later addressed the media. So he's here also, apart from the formality of introducing himself to us, to engage with us to see what areas Ghana and Sierra Leone can cooperate for the mutual benefit of our two peoples. We've had an opportunity of having a tete-a-tete, -tete, he and I, and as well as joining the ministers, who are already engaged in quite detailed discussions about what is possible for that relationship and for that cooperation. We know we have a shared vision and a common aspiration a shared vision to make our countries better. We want to also be out of poverty, to lift as many people out of poverty, and have followed very keenly your strides in education, making education free in secondary school. And following in your footsteps, we have also declared free education from pre-primary to end of high school in Sierra Leone. That is no mean task, as you know, but we are determined because it is important for us to, to really educate our population in the 21st century. A joint communique on cooperation was signed by foreign ministers of both countries. On to MTN Video Report, and our citizen journalist, also called Concerned Citizen, reports on poor sanitation at Akuse of the Lower Manyakrobo in the Eastern region. Thank you. 
being honest to ourselves as patriotic Ghanaians, just look at the refuse situation in Akusi. Three major municipalities ranging from Yilo, Lower Manya, Esujamai, have all their refuse being dumped in Akusi. Akusi is so developing so fast that very soon it will get closer here. So at the end of the day, if we have people in head of government, are they so much happy about this very situation or is it just because they are not living in the town with us? Please. Now, the health security in Akuse is a serious issue and we are going to deal with it so that our voice may be heard. What kind of situation is this? Lower Manyakroba District Assembly, please wake up. And nobody have the mind that where they are even mining the limestone, this could be used for their refill. Now you are creating all huge this refuse here in Akusi that is going to take the same shape of the Krobo mountain. Let us wise up people of Lower Manya. Concerned citizen is really concerned there. You can also put your locality on the map via MTN video report on WhatsApp number 055-1433044. Stay with us here on News 360 for the latest of business news coming up with Park Kwesi Asari shortly. Hello, good evening and welcome to the very latest in the world of business. Let's begin with uh, happenings in the petroleum industry because prices of diesel and petrol have gone up at the pounds by about 2.74%. Well, this is as a result of a rise in the average Brent crude price by 5.7% with a corresponding increment in the prices of gasoline and gas oil on the international market. There, there's more in the following DEX report. For this window, the increments recorded so far represent about 2.74% change in price or 0.14 pesos increment on every liter. Some oil marketing companies, OMCs, could keep prices same to maintain market share as part of the deregulation policy. Currently, a liter of diesel and petrol is being sold at 5 cities 21 pesos across all major filling stations, both Total and Shell show the new price for diesel and petrol at 5 cities 21 pesos. Well, also followed with an increase in their prices to the same price of Shell and Total. This means, by the price build-up calculation, every consumer will pay at least 60 pesos on each gallon of petrol or diesel purchased. Government has stated that, but for their intervention, prices would have been higher than it is now, citing the removal of some taxes and levies, including the reduction of the special petroleum tax from 17.5% to 13% and abolishing excise duty on petroleum products. The IES is calling for the total scrapping of the special petroleum tax, which it says represents about 10% of the price of fuel per litre. Interesting developments in the petroleum industry. Meanwhile, some drivers and a section of the general public have expressed concerns about the latest fuel price increase. They want an intervention by government to control further increases. My colleague Noam Falong interacted with some motorists. Fuel prices in major filling stations in the capital have increased by 2.74%. The increase was predicted by the Institute of Energy Security just last week and is being attributed to the increase in crude prices on the world market by 5.7%. It will also be recalled that just last month, fuel prices in Ghana crossed the five city mark for the first time. The level at which you know, the gauge had to be when I bought, I think it was about 80 or 60, it wasn't. So I thought the guys had cheated me. Every increase takes money from my pocket. So it's something that I wouldn't, I wouldn't like if every consumer, but there's very little we can do about this. And then unfortunately, you know, the consumer has to buy the bullet because I, I personally believe that, and that's my general belief, that every government has good intentions. With fuel price per liter rising to 5 CD 21 pesos for both diesel and petrol, private drivers say the increase has become unbearable. Commercial drivers, on the other hand, find it difficult to pass the increase on to passengers. When fuel prices increases, it affects the, uh, it has to affect the prices of the first. But now, the increase is marginal, it's too much. There's going to be chaos misunderstanding here and there, so definitely. 
it will take some time before they will address with the new prices in the system. An adjustment for the fuel prices in Ghana. We cannot get anything from the, I mean, the, the, the work that we are doing. You should just adjust the um, fuel prices again. They expect a policy intervention to cushion the impact of world market increases and preserve their disposable income. Away from happenings in the petroleum industry, Minister of Information designate Kojo Opon Kruma says his ministry will partner with the Ministry of Trade to see to the passing, uh, to, to the passage of the law by Parliament, the Advertisers' Bill. Uh, speaking of the 12th edition of the Gongo Awards organized in Accra by the Advertisers' Association of Ghana, Kojo Opon Kruma said the bill, when passed into law, will spell out and help enforce universal best practices in the advertising industry. According to the information minister designate, when the bill, which is currently before parliament, is passed into law, it will be binding on all individuals and organizations to apply best practices in advertising. He also urged industry practitioners to embrace the opportunities which technology offers to meet the needs of customers. I'm happy to inform you that work on the bill has now been completed and it has now been tabled before cabinet. My task as incoming minister by the grace of God, will be to liaise with the trade ministry that is shepherding the bill to complete whatever outstanding work there is on it so that parliament can receive and consider it and hopefully pass it into law. The Advertising Association of Ghana, Gong Gong Awards, is organized to recognize and reward indigenous creativity and strategic thinking in advertisement which adds value to local businesses. President of the Advertising Association of Ghana, Togbo Mensa noted that the bill will ensure discipline in the industry. We need that bill to control the, 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 our industry. That bill will bring our, our business to a level that is respected around the world. You have to uh, come into the business and have, there are categories of things, the things you should do and not to do. And so when the bill comes, we, are, we shall be able to enforce uh, discipline in our business. Minister for Business Development, Al Haj Dr. Ibrahim Mohammed Awal, received the Special Recognition Award. Well, that's all for the very latest in the world of business. For more business news stories, log on to our website www.3news.com. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari. Hello, good evening, and it's time for us to bring you all the latest from the world of sports. Right here on News 360 with me, Thierry Nyan, and we're starting off with women's football. And just 10 years after, uh, you know... Um, you know, triggering a massive football festival with the hosting of the 2008 African Cup of Nations. Well, Ghana will play host again, this time with the women's edition. Now, eight teams are due to gather in Accra and Cape Coast over a two-week period to determine who is going to be the queen of, uh, you know, African football. Of course, the Black Queens are in contention. Naneke Amankwa, my colleague, visited the team at the Ghanaman Soccer of Excellence and filed this report. We are here at the Ghanaman Soccer Centre where the Black Queens of Ghana have been here for the past two months to prepare ahead of the 2018 Women's Africa Cup of Nations. The Black Queens will be making their 11th appearance since 1991 in the competition. Their best results has been runner-up in 1998, 2002, 2006 and also third place in 2016. They are hoping to do a host and win of the 2018 African Nations Cup. Since the start of the African Women's Championship, Ghana has never left the trophy. Later next month, they will have a massive responsibility to change that. The Black Queens will face Algeria in the opening game of the 2018 edition before playing Mali and Cameroon in the group. For weeks, they have been getting ready in Pram Pram, shutting out the uncertainty over Ghana's status as host. The Queens has fallen off the specking order in African football. For long, the bright made in African football behind Nigeria, Ghana has watched on as the likes of South Africa and Cameroon have caught on and in some cases taken over them. Coach Bashir Hereford is fully aware of that history, but as he watches the ladies chase the ball and go through their spaces, he is confident they will face the tags without no pressure. I have not been under pressure before. The reason being that I know what I can do and know what I'm doing. I'm, I am a trained teacher of maybe economics. I'm teaching at ACM 
junior high, and then you take me to Achimota. Then say uh, how pressure. Uh, that is what I've learned. So what I go, when I go to Achimota, the way I will teach is the same thing when I go to Mfante Prima, I will teach. So there, sh there shouldn't be any pressure on me. The pressure is the euphoria. It's what the people expect. And so the pressure will take care of itself. But me as a coach, I don't have any pressure. And then because it's his first time to Ghana, is preparing very well to win the, the AFCON. Janet Ayam is one of those Hayford will rely on for goals. She is in no doubt they can step up to it. It's a privilege that we are in the team and we are playing in Ghana. We will make sure the things that at least the other time they couldn't make it up to the finals. I think this time we are going to make it up. And as we are hosting, we are not only just going to the competition just to take part. No, we are going for the cup to qualify for the World Cup. All right, so still on that uh, particular team, the Black Queens. Well, the Alcon 2018 is set to begin on November 17, uh, you know, 2017 or 2018, that is. And the Black Queens are set to play against Algeria. Now, that is going to be the first of five games if the Queens are hoping to win the whole thing. Ex-captain Ajabayo and uh, former goalkeeper Suleimana, uh, you know, uh, Memuna too, are very confident that the Queens definitely will be in good position to do this. Our group is not really tough, just that only Cameroon, that will give us tough time. But the rest, I think we will qualify to the next stage. Uh, for now, they are still here. They have to go and play friendly matches. But we are here. They are still training here. They said they are waiting for the professionals to come. So we are waiting for them to come. Maybe they will play one or two games. Then we see the team, whether they are ready or they are not ready. We have met Algeria before, and we beat them. And we meet Cameroon. We beat them. We have met them before. We have been beating them. So I don't think it's a very tough group for us. Do you think we can still do the host and win affair? Of course. I'm sure Ghana will host and win. All right, so let's go straight to the offices of the Ghana Football Association. Well, uh, it opened for official business today, four months after it was closed down. Now, the Secretariat will restart the full operation with staff expected to be at post. So work has returned to the Ghana Football Association headquarters four months after the Ghana Police Service declared it a crime scene and subsequently closed it down. Renovation works, as mentioned by the president of the Normalization Committee, Dr. Kofi Amwa, has been completed. The building looks fresher, the paved floors are looking brighter, but the major observation is that security has become tighter at the premises here at the Football Association. So work has begun, officials are in there doing their work in a bid to return Ghana football back to normalcy. From the FA headquarters here in Accra, Yao Fusulabi for TV3 News. Normalization committee occupying the building as it stands. Well, before I leave, I'll just leave you with a scoreline between Arsenal and Leicester City. It's 1 1 message Ozil uh, equalizing for the Gunners. And that's exactly where we bring an end to the sports bulletin. We'll bring you more later on Sports Station with me, Thierry. Don't go anywhere. All right, so it's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Quadrado. Now, we are in week five already as Ghana's most beautiful contestants took to the stage to challenge uh, and pro to promote Africa by representing some African countries and uh, educating the audience on their culture. Now, Ohima from the Brongahafu region won the star performer of the night, while Nabia from the northern region won the most eloquent award. There was much anxiety and uncertainty on Sunday's show, with two contestants having been evicted last week. The eight remaining contestants had to put up spectacular performances to secure them in the house. Taxi with projecting the African culture through the lenses of some selected countries such as Mali, Zambia, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Togo, among others. The queens each took the audience to the drawing board explaining the unique cultures of these countries that define their roots as Africans. Being an Ivorian for the ninth, Ohima, the Bonahafo regional representative, focused on a traditional dance from La Côte d'Ivoire called Guli. 
picking up the French accent, she updated her audience on the unknown dance and some food similarities between Ghana and La Côte d'Ivoire. Goli simply means mask. The people the mostly perform the Goli dance are the Baule people. Tell the Republic de la Côte d'Ivoire. The people of Baule are known to be the account society of the Ivory Coast. This is the fourth award she has received in the competition. Representing Mali as a warrior, Nabia took the audience through trying moments of that nation where in liberating indigents from an animal disturbing the peace of the land. Somewhere in present day northern Nigeria and travel to the Mali Empire. He was a brave hunter who mastered archery, the art of hunting with bow and arrow. Nabia was crowned the most eloquent for the night. There was spontaneous jubilation after the judge's announcement of no eviction. Just like we were expecting from her, she's giving us the performances, everything from week to week, she's killing it. And no wonder we had the most eloquent of Nama Lai, my dear. Yeah. We're very exciting. We come here each and every Sunday to support work here. Queen. She's going to win she's because she, she deserves sure each and everything. And the crown, the car, all the prices that it's comes with it. <laughs> Not to waste. Abna winning anything. Be biara. Kumasio and info omunina on be jaying. Yeah, never be fight nako. And I'm a buana. So the question is, are you voting? It's not just about talking. This week, there is eviction. Now, moving on to the final story for tonight. Rapper and winner of Talented Kids Season 9, Samuel Owusu, has arrived in Dubai for his much-hyped tour. Samuel Owusu, the king of the kids, was accompanied by Talented Kids judge Benedict Yate and pupils from the British Columbia College. The gifted rapper, a.k.a. Young King Clef, is already leaving the ex Dubai experience. The promising star is expected to spend a week touring sites including the Desert Safari, Dubai Dolphinarium, Burj Khalifa and Saluja Cruise. The group is expected to return home this weekend. So we wish Samuel all the best in his travel. And that's about it for entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Quedrado. You can follow us and uh, get more news at 3news.com. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Very exciting for Samuel, isn't it? <laughs> I should think so. That's all time will allow for this edition of News 360. Thanks for watching. My name is Lisa Moni. I'm Natalie Fultz. Visit 3news.com for a lot more news. Remember, News at 10 will simulcast on our sister station, 3FM 92.7. Have a lovely evening.